Hello, it's the middle of December and I thought today I would talk about polytunnels. Until last year I'd never considered having a polytunnel. And then I realised that actually they're cheaper than I thought and you can get really small ones. Because what put me off having a polytunnel was the idea that if you put it on your allotment you have to keep going there and watering and our allotment association actually shuts off the water in the winter which makes it difficult to keep things going within the polytunnel unless you've got a water supply. Of course it doesn't get the rain so you know you've, you've got to set up some kind of complicated system for collecting rainwater and then fill, feeding it into your polytunnel. Anyway so then I realised the smallest size of polytunnel I could get would actually fit in our back garden. So this is what we did. I persuaded Chris to be a good idea. We can grow the tomatoes in it and then we don't have to have great big sprawling triffids all over the house. One benefit I hadn't anticipated was putting this polytunnel next to the fig tree there would actually supply enough shelter from the wind for the fig tree that it would produce loads more figs. We actually had two or three figs this summer which is not a common thing. Um, they tend to start to form and then that they never ripen because they, I don't know, cold winds, I think. Actually, the squirrel came and nicked the ones that we had, so it wasn't such a great benefit. But anyway, look at it now. It's got loads and loads of little tiny figs. So you may ask, why didn't we put the polytunnel over the fig or move the fig into the polytunnel? And yes, that might have been a good idea, except we've planted the fig in a pile of car tyres. And to move that or to fit the wall of a polytunnel in behind it would just be too complicated. But it'll be interesting to know what happens next year, whether it manages to produce more figs than it has done previously. So here I am inside my little polytunnel. One of the benefits of a polytunnel is that because it's got this ooh, plastic coating, it's got lots of condensation on it, um, you don't have to worry about the glass breaking. I know you can get greenhouses with um, poly, what's it, unbreakable panes now, but it actually, I think, is a whole lot simpler to put up a polytunnel, even though you have to fiddle about fitting all the tubes together. It strikes me it's actually a, a much easier option than a greenhouse. So the width of this polytunnel is a little bit wider than the span of my arms, which is enough to have a little path down the middle and a bed this side and a bed this side. We had tomatoes on this side because the sun comes from that direction and we thought the tomatoes will be really tall and we can have something shorter on this side and they'll both get the sun. Which in fact was the case. The only problem is that we aren't used to growing tomatoes and we allowed them to sprawl too much. We knew you've got to pinch out the little shoots, the axillary buds, but after that, it started to go wild. They, they, they just kept on producing more branches and we didn't keep them in check and keep them thinned out, which was okay until it got really moist in here and they started to get black leaves and mold and start to shrivel and we had to cut off leaves like nobody's business. Um, and we did get some tomatoes, but we probably have got more if we looked after them better. So that's something next year we're going to really work on the tomatoes and space them properly and keep them thinned and ventilated as well. It gets very moist in here if you have everything closed up. And then at the back, at, at the end of this, where this fork is lying, we had another little bed here and this was where we put a couple of melon plants, one of which died and the other one produced a small unripe melon that was actually disgusting to eat and it would be nice to grow melons again next year. And on this side we had a couple of lettuces that, I don't know, they just... Uh, I didn't feel that it was the best use of space to have lettuces in a little tunnel like this. Some people have a shelf kind of suspended halfway up and I feel that if you're going to do that you probably need a bigger polytunnel than we've got. So we've got to plan our space carefully next year and we can do that because we know what didn't work last year. And the other thing, of course, is that people use their polytunnels for growing things through the winter, and we could have done that, but I didn't get around to planning and planting. This is the key, is to plan things. 
So next year I shall plan some winter salads which will go in after the tomatoes come out. Thinking about erecting a polytunnel, you really do have to expect to anchor it extremely firmly. The one we got, it was very cheap, it didn't come with proper ground anchors, so Chris bought them separately. They've got like a loop and then a long curly, like a screw thing, so you have to screw them into the ground. And the problem with that then is that you have to screw it into the ground first, and then you have to put the pole through the loop. And to do that, you have to dismantle the thing, put the pole through the loop, and reassemble it. And that's quite fiddly. It's best to have two people to do that. But it really is important to anchor these things properly because the amount of wind they get and the buffeting, because there's such a big surface area, this has already started to rip here. There's the manure that we've carried over from the allotment. Um, quite a lot of which is going to go in the polytunnel and some will go on the fruit trees. So there it is, sandwiched between the raspberry canes on one side and the patio on the other and right next to the fence on that side. And there was a problem with it being so close to the fence because we couldn't get round the side of it. Or we didn't, I mean we could have kind of squeezed round but um, we didn't weed it properly. And bindweed, we haven't got a, well, there is bindweed, it's not that evident. I pull the sort of stalks out as I see them, but the, the raspberry canes actually have quite a, a lot of bindweed in them. But what I found in the polytunnel was the bindweed wasn't growing there, but the roots were going in underneath and taking all the sustenance, I guess, and feeding it out to the weeds that were growing up the raspberry canes. So when I, when I dug up in the polytunnel, when I dug up the ground in the polytunnel, it was full of these great fat white roots. And I'm not sure how you solve a problem like that in an established garden. Here's my pile of bindweed roots that I got out of the polytunnel. Quite a large bunch of them. I'm just leaving them there and hoping the weather will kill them off. And if not, I'll just have to burn them, I guess. So anyway, that's what I've learned about polytunnels from our first season. If you have any tips to add, please put them in the comments. See you next time.